everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. In today's video, we're going to be discussing transposable elements, which are a pretty cool feature in the human genome and in genomes of other organisms as well. So what are transposable elements? Specifically, they are sequences of DNA that can actually move from one location in the genome to another location in the genome. And because they can do that, move around in the genome, they have the special name that you may have heard of jumping genes. Again, that's because they can jump from one place in the genome to somewhere completely different in the genome. Now, the process of moving from one place to another involves recombination. And specifically, when we're talking about transposable elements, this movement is called transposition. And also, transposable elements, they are not always harmless. In fact, they are often mutagenic. Mutagenic because they can interrupt other genes. This means that if you have a transposable element leave its original place in the genome and move to a different place in the genome, Sometimes the place to where it moves is right in the middle of another gene. And by disrupting or interrupting that other gene, that other gene may no longer be functional, resulting in phenotypic change and sometimes even disease. And so that is where the mutagenic property comes from. Now, there are two different types of transposable elements. These are transposons and retrotransposons. Let's talk about each one and how they are different from each other. Transposons may or may not leave a copy behind. That means that when they move from one location in the genome to another, they may leave a copy of themselves in the old location. We consider that a kind of copy and paste mechanism. They may also not leave a copy behind and have a more cut and paste mechanism where they leave the old location, do not leave a copy of themselves behind, and just go to the new location. Now, transposons are able to move because they encode a gene for an enzyme called transposase. So transposase is the enzyme that catalyzes their excision or removal from the original place and their reintegration or recombination into the new location. If you are interested in learning about how enzymes work, how they catalyze these kinds of situations, then please see my video titled Introduction to Enzymes. Now let's talk about retrotransposons. These always leave a copy behind. So there is always a copy of the retrotransposon in the old location and an identical copy in the new location. So always a copy and paste mechanism rather than cut and paste. They use a different kind of enzyme, specifically reverse transcriptase. And in addition to using reverse transcriptase, they also work through an RNA intermediate. This means that you have the DNA, the DNA that is the transposable element. It gets copied into an RNA intermediate. The RNA intermediate is then reverse transcribed by reverse transcriptase 
back into DNA, and that second portion of DNA is what gets integrated into the new location in the genome, while the original DNA is left behind in the original position. Now, you may have heard of this kind of mechanism before, where reverse transcriptase is used to convert an RNA intermediate into DNA. And that would be in a type of virus called retroviruses. And in fact, these retrotransposons may be evolutionarily related to retroviruses. Retroviruses, the most common one you've heard of probably is HIV. Now let's talk about a couple of examples of transposable elements. They were first discovered in maize by a woman named Barbara McClintock, who actually won the Nobel Prize for her discovery. It was found that these transposable elements, by jumping around in the genome, could actually interrupt genes for pigment color, leading to the kernels of the maize having different colors. Transposable elements have also been found in bacteria, and importantly, some transposable elements actually carry antibiotic resistance genes. And these genes can move back and forth from chromosomal DNA into plasmid DNA and back again, and can, can actually create some, uh, some medically important antibiotic resistant bacteria. Now, if you're interested in learning more about antibiotic resistance in bacteria, why it's important, how it's harmful for human health, then please see my video on antibiotic resistant bacteria. And finally, these transposable elements, they're found in many different organisms, including humans. The most common type in humans are known as ALU sequences. And ALU sequences are actually very, very common in the human genome. There are many, many, many copies of them, and they can create some health issues. They've actually been linked to several cancers, and that goes back to the mutagenic properties, because these ALU sequences can copy themselves and hop around and interrupt other genes that interruption can actually result in a variety of different types of cancers. So that is it for today, learning about transposable elements. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching Biology Professor.